Bienvenidos una vez más a este, su programa Hablemos de Real Estate con Carlos Amaya, donde hablamos relacionado con Real Estate, familia y finanzas en los Estados Unidos. En el día de hoy estamos hablando, comenzando una nueva era, donde vamos a comenzar a hacer programas con invitados que hablan solamente inglés. Entonces vamos a hacer programas bilingües, vamos a poner subtítulos un poco más adelante cuando hagamos los clips. El invitado del día de hoy es un invitado de lujo. Él es el, el entrenador personal de negocios de, de Brandon Turner, que es una persona muy conocida. Entonces después del, de, la, de la introducción vamos a estar hablando con él, vamos a estar comenzando aprender cómo podemos hacer lo imposible. Quédense con nosotros un poco más adelante. En Hablemos de Real Estate con Carlos Amaya creemos que la familia es la base de la sociedad. Por eso, nuestra misión es proveer información y herramientas a la comunidad latina de cómo lograr la libertad financiera a través de bienes raíces. So today is a very special day for, in Hablemos Real Estate. We're going to have our, our first all English episode and we have the best possible person to start with, which is Jason Driss. He's a performance coach. He's an author. He's an entrepreneur. He's an amazing story. He's so kind to share his time with us. I'm going to talk, start talking and different things about his life, why he decided to become a coach and most important, how can we do the impossible? And it's, that's one of his latest books. And so I'm, it's my pleasure to give the introduction to my friend, Jason Driss. Jason, how are you? I'm doing good, Carlos. Thank you for the invitation to be here. No, thank you for taking the time. Definitely, it's, it's something that I really wanted to do for a long time. And uh, I know how busy you are, so I'm gonna try to make, make the most out of your time. So to begin with, uh, so right now you're in Texas, correct? I'm in Austin, Texas, yes. Austin, Texas, a beautiful place. And you married, you have four kids. Married with four kids, four boys. Four boys, nice. So. When and how did you decide to become a coach? Uh, and, and our promo uh, with, with one of your clients is Brandon Turner, and he's a well-known person in terms of the podcasting and especially the, the, the real estate community. Uh, yeah. So before we get there, we get how to do the impossible, which we, which all of us wanted to want to try to do. Let's start from the beginning. So when did you decide to become a coach and how? Well, becoming a coach kind of snuck up on me. Um, I was in technology sales. After I went to college, um, studying civil engineering, that didn't work. <laughs> and I had dropped out of college and went into sales. And I did good for technology sales and was there for like 10 or 15 years. And I had a company I started. Uh, it was a startup company that made, it was my first company. And we manufactured race car driver cooling suits, believe it or not. Like these suits that race car drivers and would pump cold water to cool them off. And at the time, I had hired a coach myself to help me because I'd never run a business before. And I coached with that, that coach for about a year and a half. And then one day, that coach asked me, if I had ever thought about becoming a coach. And that question changed my life. It was literally like being struck by lightning. That question was like, I knew my purpose in life. And that was at the middle of probably Q3 2012. Okay. And then 2013, I got hired into a coaching company to work there. And I worked for that coaching company for about four years. And then I went on my own. So I've been coaching professionally since 2013. So it's going to be like nine years. So, and, 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 it, and it's um, super nice that you mentioned that because sometimes our weakness, I'm not saying that was a weakness, but becomes our strength. So you, you, get, you were getting a, a personal coach. And then at that time, you said, you said, you know what? I tried it. I know it works and I want to do it myself. So you were working for an, any company you did for four years. So when did you, be, you decided to become, to fly solo? Sometimes it's hard, you know, to try to become an entrepreneur. Like you said, you have a part yeah. of your life. And you said, you know what? I know what I want to do. I want to become a coach. But within an organization, it's different that you try to do it by yourself. So you're trying to do, do really, really difficult things. You become a coach, successful coach, and try to be an entrepreneur. So when did you decide to do that? Well, it was, it was all like with the goal of becoming financial, financially successful, okay. you know, in, in 2003, I read rich dad, poor dad. And that book ever since that, ever since I read that book, I've never had weekends off since, um, because I was chasing growth and expansion and success. So while I was a coach in, in, at the first company I worked for, and the great thing, the hard thing about becoming a coach that's like a life coach or professional coach is getting experience, right? Because you need to get like thousands of hours of experience before you get really, really good. And when you're starting your own business and finding your own clients, it's a little challenging. So the company I worked for was an environment where you could get a lot of clients and get a lot of coaching done. So I did like almost 800 hours of coaching a year for that company. And in 2016, there were some changes in the 
the compensation structure of that business. And I wasn't generating the money that I wanted to. And for a long time, I wasn't actually sure if I was going to make it as a coach. I knew that I was going to make it some way. I knew I was going to create financially success because I had to. I, I was in my 40s and my startup company had taken most of my savings that I had. So the only way I was going to support four boys was making lots of money. And there wasn't a job that was going to pay me enough. So I knew I had to create something. And when that business stopped working, I kind of shifted and basically was finding what other options and jobs I can do at the time to keep moving that direction. Okay. So that sounds beautiful. And, and, and if you see it the way right now with the end product, obviously it worked, but how was the, the beginning stages when, when you're trying to make the name of yourself, like you say, okay, if you want another company where you have a, a supply of, of a lot of clients, um, and now you have to be on your own. So how, how was, how was the beginning of, the, of that stage of your life? Well, becoming a coach was exciting and terrifying. <laughs> Um, because we had, my wife had ran a preschool out of our house and we moved and we had our, our second son was born, uh, was due to be born uh, right around Easter in 2013. And we were living in near Sacramento, San Francisco. And we decided that we were going to move to near Sacramento where the cost of living was lower. So my wife could stop working and have, um, and stay home with the kids because this, we had one and two was on its way. We moved to Sacramento. She closed her business. And then like a week later, I got fired from my day job or not fired. My position was eliminated at the same time. It was like, Hey, do you want to join this coaching program? So there's sheer terror about a baby coming in three weeks with no money and no insurance and no job to, Oh my God, I can be a coach. So the early stages were incredibly challenging. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> um, you know, in 2014, we were literally on food assistance from the state. We were on food stamps, but like women in California has food assistance for mothers and children. And, and we were literally on that. And we've had times in our life where my wife came home from the grocery store and said our credit, our, our debit card was declined and the woman behind us bought us groceries. Um, and I'll never forget that. And, and to this day, if you ever see me, I'll always have at least $300 in my wallet. Um, and the reason I always carry that cash around is because if I have the opportunity to help somebody in that situation, I do. And I actually did one day, there was a woman who was on the same food assistance. I recognized the checks and I went up and gave her money. And, um, but it was, it was not easy getting here. It was, it was a challenging process. So 2014 and, and, and I'm, I really think that, that you shared, th th thank you that you shared the part, the part of your story, because usually when, when you have someone that, that's successful as, as you are, uh, sometimes you, you try, they try to omit that part, you know, that was so hard 2014, you were getting some kind of assistant and then, uh, you have a family and, and there was, there was no going back. So when you, when you are in that stage, the only, the only place is up. So to, to, you decided to move on and try to, to make it happen. So, uh, how did it work out? Uh, how, how you start getting your first clients? How do you start getting, start getting traction? Because usually when you get a momentum, things start going your way, but it takes yeah. time. It's a lot of effort. It's like when you're, when you're just getting the, uh, the, uh, an airplane out of the, the earth, you know, it's a lot of effort to, for that to happen. Yeah, well, the the coaching business has been built has been running since 2013. You know, when I started in 2013, when I lost my job and the new company was training me and I wasn't making much, I would go, go to the Chamber of Commerce and I would like meet clients there and do whatever coaching I could. So the business kind of I probably had two to five personal clients at any time from 2013 to 2019. But in 2019 is when things everything changed. That's the changing point. Okay, 2019. So what happened in 2019? And how did how did that change? So in 2019, you know, I had I had worked for this company and I had learned how to be aggressive and focused and channel my energy. And I was like, go, 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 go. And I was making myself and everyone around me crazy. Cold, cold showers, <laughs> chanting. Cold showers. <laughs> I ate dog food at 4 a.m. Like I would do all that crazy stuff because I saw people who were successful doing that. So I realized if I copy them, I'll be successful. Well, I got a certain part of success. And in 2019, we had this company that just wasn't working. It was like me and two other people were building a coaching company. It was called Excel Business Coaching. It didn't have my name on it. And we literally couldn't sell anything, like nothing. It was surprisingly six months with me and a full-time cold caller didn't sell a single contract. So, and I'm so, just, so, so you didn't excel. We did. We failed massively. <laughs> failed massive, massive failure. And I let. So this is this middle of 2019, and I'm like, 
all right, it's done. I take off my coaching hat. I'm like, I need to get a job. I've, I've pushed my family as far as I could. Um, and I literally gave up and cried. I was like, the dream's over. And, and I literally cried and I was sad. And I, I, and I thought at least I gave it everything I could. And in the next month after I had quit, deals started flowing in, clients started flowing in. And in the next month, I got four coaching contracts that I hadn't had in six months. And I was like, why did I just get four coaching contracts after I quit? But all this hard work didn't give me anything. And that so, was the turning point right there. Perfect. So when when did this, those four clients came from? Um, they were they were referrals. Referrals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and let's let's get Brandon into the picture. When did you meet him? And then when did you start working with him? I started coaching with Brandon probably in 2018. Okay. Right. When I first met Brandon, I didn't know who he was. Um, I'm not a real estate investor. <laughs> and so I didn't, I just thought he was a guy. Yeah. Tall guy. Tall, tall guy. Tall guy with a beard. Yeah. I never, well, all the coaching was over the phone. So I didn't even know what he looked like. Okay. Yeah. So, so how he found you? He found me because um, one of my former clients at my previous company I worked for was a member of Go Abundance. Okay. And Brandon reached out to him and said, Hey, who's your coach? And he gave him my name. And that's how we started. Okay, so, and, and then I'm sorry, go ahead. Go, 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 go. So, so I had that, that a point in 2019 where I was like, wait a second. I gave it everything I had cold showers, 4am dog food didn't work. I quit and it works. And I started to like, that was the foundation of like this book and everything, which was really that hard work doesn't create success. Alignment with success creates success. So I, I started to notice that Brandon had a big audience and he could be a good source of leads for me. So, but as my paying client, I can't push him to sell his clients. Does, I can't do that. It's unprofessional. So Brandon and I would have these coaching calls and he'd say, you know something, we should do an Instagram live. And I'm like, we should totally do an Instagram live. And he said that multiple times, probably three or four times over like an 18 month period. And every time after that, he never followed up. He would say it at the end of a call, he never follow up. And I never thought anything of it. And I'm just like, oh, he just, he doesn't mean it. And then October, 2019, as I'm starting to study alignment, I discovered that I wasn't at a high enough financial mindset to work with Brandon. Okay. And so, and, and we had talked about it and I knew that it was there, but it had to sync up and we weren't syncing because I had fears about money that were still there. So. I actually read this book called Being You, Changing the World by Dane Here, which is um, a perspective on belief change processes. It's a different belief change set. So I used his tools, did his exercise like every day for like three weeks on my financial mindset. And then I have a call with Brandon. And we have a call with Brandon. And, then he, and at the end of the call, he goes, you know, we should really do an Instagram line. I'm like, yeah, we should. The next day, he follows up. We set that appointment. We have that Instagram live. And then all of a sudden I start getting seven clients a month. Boom, 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 boom. And then a year later in 2020, in August, September, I was on the Bigger Pockets podcast and that turned my business overnight because my business went from 100,000 in 2019 to 1 million in 2020. Well, say that again. Uh, what were the numbers? 100,000. Yes. And, and the next year we did a million. Million. Okay, so you 10x. 10x. So, so, so Grant Cardone will be proud of you. He would be proud of me. Yeah. <laughs> and then the year after that, I tripled. Okay. So you said something super, super. I mean, a lot of other things that you said that are like blowing our minds. So we have the culture of like, like, like entrepreneur has to, they have to hassle, you know, like, like, yeah. like Gary V, 18 hours a day. Like you, you have to hustle the whole time and you have to work really hard and especially my community and i and i always say that community we work hard like we have like a full-time part-time and all we work all the time uh, mm -hmm. but but you realize uh the in, in a lot of us that 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 doesn't that doesn't equal success that doesn't equal that you're going to be able to make it in whatever you're trying to accomplish so let's let's go back to the alignment and also the yeah. about the mindset you say okay you have a, I have a mind center of money and that's why that was the black in me to move forward with Brandon to the Instagram and become the person that you are. Um, although you were that person already, you just, just had to get some some things to some roads in the block and just get there. So let's let's yeah. talk first of all. First of all, in terms of the of the alignment and how that makes more 
sense and it gives more results. And instead of trying to just work as hard as you can and just yeah. burn yourself out. Uh, yeah. And understand, understand culturally that, that your culture, hard work is a part of it, right? Hundred, incredibly hard workers. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what I discovered is that hard work doesn't create success, right? Because you, there's times when you've worked hard and you haven't hit the target, right? And there may have been years when you worked hard. And then there were other times where you did very little and you hit the target, right? So we want to understand that success occurs when you get into alignment with success, okay? Hard work just increases your chances of getting into alignment with success because you're putting more effort in. And if you're focused and you're consistent and you pay attention to what you're doing and you keep working hard, eventually you'll get into alignment with success. That's what most people do. Eventually they get into alignment with success. What I figured out is that if you start in alignment with success, you radically shorten the time it takes to hit success. Okay, so for someone that listened to, to us for the first time, so what is alignment? Uh, because it sounds great, sounds sounds a lot better than the hard working. Although it doesn't mean that you don't you don't have to work hard in order to get to alignment. But so yeah, there's there's still a volume of work maybe high, right? Uh -huh. Right. There may be a high volume of work, but really like when when you're move when you're working on your target or your business, if you're working on a real estate project, are you feeling resistance that you have to push through, or are you feeling flow, right? We're conditioned, all of us, your culture, my culture, all of us are conditioned to work hard no matter what, right? But what we want to start doing is paying attention to what's working and what's not working because there's times when we think we have to work really hard when in reality, there's an opportunity right here to the right of it that's very simple and easy, but it just looks different. So it's about the first step is increasing your awareness to how you're feeling in the process, because right. how you feel is your indicator of alignment. Okay, so you have to find out how you feel, and if you feel resistance, that means that you are not, you are not in alignment. Although we, not, we have to read the book anyway. So yeah, if we if we dive in, <laughs> if we dive in a little bit more, let me um, this I'll, let me draw something real quick. This will help. Okay, sure. So I'll give you a simple graphic here. So when we start to dive into the action piece, this is going to help. So as as human beings. We know this says action, okay? As human beings, we know that if we want something, we need to take an action, right? It's the action we want. So we end up chasing action, 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 right? As human beings. Um, the thing that actually occurs, if, if you know what action to take, it means your mindset is in alignment with the target, right? If your mindset is in alignment, it generates an aligned action, meaning if your brain knows what to do, your hands will take the right action, right? Now, what happens when you don't know what to do, right? That's where right. you start, because if you know exactly what to do, you're in alignment. If you don't know what to do, you're not in alignment, right? Okay. So, so, so this is how life used to work, right? And this is how I used to coach. So it's like we would focus on mindset and try to align the mindset with the action there. And what I've discovered is there's a, another circle here on my, on my drawing here. So there's a circle there that says frame, mindset, action. Now, to give you an example, action, your mind, but what controls your mind, right? Yes. You do. All of you, yeah, right? All of you. So, so all of this is all of you, like you, like, and, and it's like the frequency of you as a human being, right? Your body is made of atoms, which is energy, your energy, I'm energy. And we, our focus directs what, how we feel. If you focus on a happy thought, you'll feel happy. If you focus on a sad thought, you'll feel sad. And so what ends up happening is when you are in alignment with you, with the target, you will learn how and know what to do. Okay. When your frame is in alignment with the target, it will generate the mindset that will generate, that'll generate the thoughts that take the action. When you're not in alignment, your frame will not generate the mindset and the wrong action. Right. Yeah. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's what the, sometimes when, when you are, you are not in alignment that you said you, you're yeah. in the right frame, you can take massive action and yeah. then you feel like not really happy. 
and then you could get the result because because you're lacking the third circle, which is the the, yeah. the frame part. Yeah, and and like, and we and we know, and you know, Carlos, right? Life responds to you, right? Life responds to you. How yeah. does life respond to you? Is, we don't know. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's life. Maybe it's us. Like, but if we explore the idea that we're made of energy, because we're made of atoms. The, our, our desk, this microphone is made of atoms too. So is this monitor. It's all, it's all energy. So what determines if your, your new product launch works or your new house gets sold or you find a deal, right? Are you in alignment with that? Because basically what I've discovered, and if I hadn't proven this so many times, I wouldn't believe it. But what I actually believe is your frame is the vibrational frequency of you as a human being. And the vibrational frequency of you as a human being determines how life responds to you. So what I figured out how to do is to get into alignment with what you want so life responds to you with better opportunities and more ideas and better connections and better flow. Amazing. So I just want to share something really quick that what Brandon says about you. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, over here, he says, uh, when I look back at the past five plus years of working with Jason, the impossible is exactly what I, I feel I've done. That's, that's one of the, the, the testimonies that, that he provides. And, and the one of many, I mean, he, he, I saw him last year at BPCon 21, and he was talking about exactly what you're saying in terms of the alignment. He would put it in terms of real estate. So for someone that, that wants to start getting into the alignment, although it's a process and we're going to talk about the, the tools that you have, but like a, like a, like a, like, like a simple exercise, uh, beginning exercise to start to go, going towards that alignment, what would it be? Well, the simple way is to just imagine a version of you that knows what to do. Okay. Okay. Because, because the process of shifting frames, I call frame shifting, right? We frame shift all the time. But we frame shift the wrong way most times. So let's say this is you. You wake up and this is your level point. You're balanced. And then you're driving in the car and you hear a song from 20 years ago and you think about something you did 20 years ago and you feel bad. And then you feel bad, right? Because you lit your focus gets directed to an old memory. So you're literally doing a reverse frame shift, right? Where you'll feel heavy. And you'll feel doubtful and un, 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 lack of confidence, right? So yes. that's, that's a reverse frame shifting. What I'm doing is teaching people how to dial into a higher version of them they haven't been yet. Okay. That's all I'm doing. And this is, it, it is so simple. So can you imagine... I'm going to do it directly with you, Carlos. Can you get a sense? That, that was a part of this. That wasn't, that part, wasn't part. You didn't have, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to coach you. So can you get a sense no. of a version of you and I don't know how much money you make, but I'm just going to throw a number out there. Can you get a sense of a version of you anytime in the first future that knows how to make a million dollars in one day? Okay. Can you sense that version of you? Yes. Okay. Just keep your attention on it. Now, typically, we'll hold it there for 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Do you feel any different? It was only oh, 10. I feel powerful. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because when you shift frames, you'll feel your confidence will increase. You'll feel lighter, and you'll feel more more. Um, you'll have a positive emotion. A lot of times, people will describe it as calm. The funny thing is, I only discovered this two years ago. Um, if you look at people's content, like Tony Robbins, it was built around the, only the mindset level because forty years ago we couldn't access this level. So frame shifting is literally what you just did right there. That's all it is. So when I talk about doing the impossible the impossible is just a target that most people don't think is common now if you remember from seventh grade science class right seventh grade science class for me was like our body is made of atoms atoms are 99 percent free space you remember that yes but but how does my head feel solid right you know and they also told us we live in an attraction-based universe that if two particles were in space unaffected by outside forces, they would be attracted to each other. I don't know. Do you remember that from seventh grade science class, right? Sure, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Some people do. That just stuck in my head. But, yeah. the, but the point is, you can hit any target you align with. 
So if you can hit any target you can you align with, why not aim at an impossible target? And that's what I do is I get people aligned with what their impossible target is, and then I remove the resistance to that occurring. Amazing. Um, I was part of the Cubandas uh, event around my area, and, um, and that was a couple of months ago. And I have like three or four of members that, that are part of your group, and they were talking really high to you. Uh, if someone listened to that, that part, what, you, what we just did, someone was, was might think, you know, that was so easy. I mean, that, that is that it? By the end of the day, I mean, um, it's it's more than that. Although that's the final product, just to get into an alignment. And, and to, I'm sorry, to get to the right <clears throat> frame. Um, so, but how can you help? I mean, I mean, how what kind of tools do you have? I mean, you, you have a like uh, you have a like a like a mentoring program. You have like a, I'm sorry, like a coaching program. You have a like a yeah. mastermind. What what do you do? Because uh, sometimes like. And, the, and Brando uses this example all the time. Like everybody knows, I mean, a lot, lot of people know how to get financially free. You just buy enough assets that cover your, your financial expenses yeah. and then a monthly expenses that you're financially free. How can you get a six pack? Just you do apps, try not to, not to eat carbs and do en enough enough exercise to be able to, to, to build the muscle. But not yeah. that many people do it. So what kind of tools and how can you get those clients? Because Brando is one of them. I, I, I was thinking, preparing for the show, that you like Brandon is like a, I always think like life is like is like a, like a game like a, like 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 a game and uh, and I say like Brandon is like like a Michael Jordan and and in the podcasting era in terms of real estate so you you will be like like Phil Jackson and then uh, you'll be having a lot of clients reaching success like same as Brandon or even higher so how can you are, are you able to rep replicate that because some people might think oh Brandon is one person and he's special I mean he's talent of course he is he's a hard worker but it, it doesn't stop there. You're, you're able to replicate this with thousands of people. Yeah. Well, because yeah. And it's, it, and the process works with everybody because our default state as human beings is infinite abundance and alignment. Our default state is alignment. And through our process of life, we develop beliefs and perspective based on our experiences of the past. Right? So your brain is a computer and in my entire life right now, everything prior to now is cataloged in here, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, there's a library in my brain of everything that's happened prior to now. So as I take steps forward, my brain is comparing everything I step forward compared to the past. Okay. It's like driving a car staring in the rear view mirror, right? Yeah. Now, in the next moment, anything is possible. But 98% of the people on this planet what they're going to do next is a repeat of what they just did with a variance of like one to three percent. Yeah. What I do is I rip off the rear view mirrors on the car. So you only look forward. So it's really the process of understanding this perspective of how life really works. And, and the tools that I use is the, the number one tool is like the entire foundation of it is, a, is this book. This is the foundational piece. Um, Although it's evolving because I wrote that last year, but that's a foundational piece. And, and so frame shifting and understanding that your future is not limited by your past and that anything can happen next. And when you're feeling fear or doubt or anxiety or worry as you're starting to go bigger and bigger, that's simply your process of expansion. Hmm. Most people, when they start to feel the discomfort of expansion, they shut down. And those that are successful and those that are making seven figures, the only difference between those that make seven figures and those that don't is they're more comfortable being uncomfortable. It's that simple. So be comfortable to be uncomfortable. Uh, and talking about that, when did you start to become an author? Because uh, you, you, 2019, you said you make, you make $100,000. 2020, mm -hmm. you make $1 million. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're growing. Uh, especially after you went through in 2014. So someone might think, you know what? He's going to spend all his time to try to keep growing his, his business. And, and I know how much time it takes to, 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 to write a book. And, and sometimes it's, it's fulfilled uh, as, a, as, as a habit, but it doesn't, it doesn't um, really mean that it might be like a, the best uh, investment in your time. So how and when did you start to write a book and how did you get uh, bigger packets to, to publish it? Well, getting them to publish, it was actually pretty easy. I just asked and they <laughs> knew me for Brandon's coach and they said, okay, it was literally that easy. Um, 
I had, I always thought I would write a book. Um, and you know, some people write books for money and for marketing. I write this book. I wrote this book because I feel like I'm like the shepherd of this knowledge and I want to share it. I know if people read this, it will change their lives. And I don't have to worry about money because the work I do, it, money is the result of, of, of adding value. And coincidentally, my second book, which is on financial mindset, I, is, was coming out at the end of the year. And my third book is already in my head. And so is the half of my fourth book. So I'm writing books while I'm running the business and I'm coaching and running elite client groups because it's what I do. I'm operating in my passion. I love what I'm doing. It's exciting. It's fulfilling and it's rewarding. So I do this because I can't do anything else. Uh, talking about changing people's life, uh, Mario Sandoval, which is a, he's a huge part that we're doing this show, this uh, yeah. episode right now. And then um, we'll talk about, about that later in terms of how can we bring this to, to our community, to my community in Spanish, because that's why, uh, well, let, let me go back to Mario. So he read this and he became a fan. I mean, he, I mean, he's a raving fan. I mean, he's, he's yeah. like, he's posted everywhere. He's like working out, he's doing everything. And he's like, you know what, my yeah. life is got tenfold, 10 times better after I read the book. So yeah, how did that happen? How did that happen to him? Well, yeah, this book kind of, it kind of sets you free. And it's, and, it's and, kind and, of, let me just say something really quick before that. He yeah. was successful. I mean, he was, he successful, was successful, yeah. so, so yeah, it's not something like, okay, so if someone is like broke and I say, okay, I read the book and, 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 and start doing better. It's okay. So that's it. I mean, it took some action, but that, this guy's successful, right? He's already so, successful. Yeah. He's already making yeah. good money, a lot of money. He's got multiple companies. He's on, he's doing great yeah. well, because every, every person always has another level of expansion to go into. Totally. Um, this book really helps remove any limitations in you about what is possible. And it helps you understand your infinite nature and how you can do anything and how it's easier. And it, and, it, and just because you don't know how doesn't mean you can't do it. So this book like unlocks your ability to be your full potential. That's really what it does. So going back, going, going back to the point. So what are the barriers usually that, that you see that people that, that stop people to accomplish whatever they want to accomplish? Can you ask that a different way? Yes. Okay. So what are some of the, some of the barriers? Like, for example, uh, you see patterns, you, you see people like, uh, for example, people don't want to go to the gym because they don't want to wake up early. They don't have time. Uh, they maybe sign up for the membership and never use it. Mm -hmm. but the barriers is like, okay, it's maybe la la laziness. Maybe they just don't, they think they don't have the time. So in terms of like business, what do you think that the, that the barriers that people usually have and they're hard for them to go through? Beside, before just reading read into the book? Well, the first barrier is getting in the game. Okay. Right? Getting in the game. There are people who are in the game, and then there's people who are on the sideline wanting to get in the game. Okay. So the right? first thing is just get into the game. You got it. You, you, nothing's going to happen until you commit to taking action. Okay. Right? If I, if, if I cannot, if I have a client that wants coaching and they're not in the game, I can't do anything. Like, you have to be in the game. And, and a lot of people sit on the sidelines and they're like, maybe it's basketball, for example, and they're wanting to go play, but the person who they're going to sub for just got elbowed in the face. They're like, ooh. So people can spend their time worrying about the fear of getting in the game and what may go wrong and all that. So the first barrier is just deciding that I'm going to get in the game no matter what, whether I get an elbow in the face or twist my ankle, I'm just going to keep going because that's what I'm going to play. When you make that decision to get in the game, all the fear of getting in the game goes away. Literally, that's it. That's the first barrier. Okay. The, the second barrier is embracing the personal growth that is required for your success. Because what's growing my business right now has nothing to do with business strategy and sales and marketing. It's literally my own alignment with myself and the growth within myself, the stuff from my past that's coming up. How am I embracing my fears from the past? How am I embracing my greatest fears? Am I avoiding them or am I facing them head on? Because your path of most people's path of accelerated financial success is going to take them in the direction of the greatest personal growth ever. So if you're avoiding the personal growth and avoiding all the emotions with the personal growth, you'll never be successful. Okay. Do you say, uh, I keep sharing this because 
But you say, what? okay, no, this is when the story is. Okay, so this is one of your phrases, which is pretty nice. And um, and before we go to, <clears throat> you say life is just waiting to give you everything you deserve and desire. You need to change your mindset to achieve it. That's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Yeah. Nice. Let's talk about let's talk about the the power of mastermind. Uh, we met uh, at GoBandas, which is yeah. a mastermind. And um, and when, when, thinking about it, like you could you say I, I make like hundred thousand dollars in two thousand nineteen. So. You you grow really fast and, and and you become what you are right now when you want to disclose numbers. But so so you're doing really well for yourself. So but why someone is doing that well and is getting that momentum and 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 it's and, and it's not a, like an overnight success. I mean you've been doing it at, like for many years. You started 2013. Mm -hmm. So why do why join the mastermind and what are the benefits of people that that, that want to join the mastermind? So why should someone join the mastermind? Because it's super nice, like whatever what, what we're talking right now. But mm -hmm. people finish this, reading to the book or listen to conversations such as this, and just turn around and have their own environment. You know, the the, the, yeah. the family, the co-workers, and they go back to whatever you said to the frame, which is a lot lower than we're supposed to be in order yes. to get their goals. So let's talk about the power of the mastermind and why you join one and what is the benefit to stay still staying on it. Yeah, and so being in a mastermind or other groups or our peer groups. Or okay. pods or support pods, absolutely. Um, or client communities is a way to surround yourself with people who are doing the same thing as you. Because if you're listening to this podcast right now, um, and, and if you follow Carlos, you're the type of person who's aiming for success. And I guarantee if you look around you, 80% of the people around you, probably 90% of people around you aren't doing the same thing, right? Because basically what's happening is you're climbing your mountain. Jason's climbing Jason's mountain. Carlos is climbing his mountain. So here's like a mountain, right? You're climbing, right? And you're halfway up. What should I do over here? And most of the people, and, then, and so there's a mountain here, and then there's a mountain here. And at the bottom, you have like a valley, right? So most people, every, all the average people are at the valley, right? And then, but not us, we're climbing mountains because we got this desire for growth, for expansion, for life. For, so we're climbing a mountain and, and every, when you start climbing that mountain, the people at the bottom are going, Hey, why are you climbing that? You could fall down. And you're like, but the view is great. You know? So it's like the process of climbing your mountain is a solo journey. It always is. And the reason you get into masterminds and communities is because you get to meet the other mountain climbers who will understand you. Because most people, if you're listening to this podcast, I guarantee most people around you won't understand why you do the things you do because you're different. Like people that are listening to this are are, are blessed or cursed <laughs> with the growth <laughs> uh, with the growth gene, right? And but mm -hmm. it's like putting yourself in an environment around those people really helps, and that's why I've created with, within Jason Dries Coaching a client community so that there's a support group for people as they climb their mountains. I, I I love that vision, you know, especially what you did it with the, with the mountain because that's that's true, you know. And and it's scary sometimes when you, when you start climbing, especially if you're afraid of heights. And then you see the view, but at the end of the day, you see the view, and 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 did you feel? Uh, but it's a solo path, like you said. Everybody, we 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 climbing our own mountain. And some people wanna just belong to belong to the belong to the like a peer group, mastermind of, of all the kind of groups that are out there. But they want all the people to do the work for them. So the, 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 the thing with the alignment, and that's why I love the book. So at the end of the day, we, I mean, we have to work on our, on our stuff. Like you said before, we have to be compromised without growth to be able to accomplish what we want to do. And, and nobody can do that for us. We have to do it ourselves. Yeah, you've got to do it's It's your path in life. And, and the funny thing is that whether people know it or not, they're all climbing a mountain. Yeah. So you can... You can fail terribly or you can try to work hard, but we're all on a mountain, whether you think it or not, you know? Okay. So let, let's, and we mentioned Mario Sandoval, or we are in, 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 a, in a process of trying to figure out how can we bring this knowledge in Spanish? I mean, the book is beautiful. You can get it. I mean, we're going to put a link in the, in, this, in the description and, uh, and, and something super, super nice that, that I want to mention. Um, and now because you're here, it's, it's, an, it's an easy read. You know, sometimes when, when you get this book, they're like so super big. And, and, and or you want to listen to it, do it in like 12, 14 hours. I mean, you never finish it. But this one is a very, very easy to read book. It's, it's not it's not really big. And uh, and this is it's entertaining. You know, it's, it's pretty nice. So uh, besides the book, um, you have a community. So yeah. how people can reach you and, and, and how can people get enrolled? 
Like uh, yeah. at the end, of, at the end of the day, uh, we major basketball. We made sure like 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 Brandon Turner, like Michael Jordan, and and Phil and Phil and and um and Phil Jackson. Mm-hmm. It took time. You know that yeah. that doesn't happen overnight. You know you have to keep to do the drills. You have to go to the gym like on a daily basis and and just keep in be in the frame. I mean because something that, that I like about the book is that like you fold all the frame a lot of times in the day. Yeah. I mean you have to go and put yourself back in the frame. So how can people? Uh, just enroll in your community and um, and how can people find you? That's a great question. So in addition to the audio and to the, the physical book, there's also an audio book. So if you're, if it's a little easier to hear, listen English, because we don't have the Spanish version yet. Um, it is, a, the book is available on Audible right now. You can download that, it on Audible. That, We're that, actually- that's, how, that's how when we met, did you mention it and I downloaded it right away and, 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 and I listened to it and then I read it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we're we're talking to the publisher right now about the getting Spanish uh, convert the book converted to Spanish. So that convert, I don't have a timeline on it, but we're working with the publisher right now to try to help to kind of focus into more into the Latino community. Um, and the way to engage uh, with me, you know, there we do one on one coaching, and we also do group coaching, and we also do live events. Right? If if you want to dive in for a coach, you can hire a coach. If you want to come to a live event. Uh, the next event I'm doing is in um, Austin in October. It's a three-day event. If you come sit in a room with me for three days, you're going to like pretty much integrate and learn everything in the book. It's a really, inter- it's a really crazy experience. Like we, w- I raise everybody up there. I don't know how I do it, but it's just like my gift. So that's that's like the be- the fastest acceleration you can get is a live event. Um, and then I also have a um, a program that's a, a do the impossible quick start course, and you can just buy it on my website. It's an hour of content. It's like fit less than 50 bucks to get started. And that will give you some content to start there as well. And the, we're also launching the do the impossible podcast. Um, target launch date is in, um, September, Sep- late, nice. mid, late September is the launch date. So that's coming as well. Okay, like when, when you go when you go to, go to a restaurant, sometimes you want to try, it, uh, you, you want to get an appetizer to see how good the restaurant is. So the appetizer is this. I mean, I mean, this, and this is like a full meal, but yeah. at least just to, to get to get to get a test of it. So yeah, that's how, that's the that's the foundation. Absolutely. If if, if the book at the audio book, yeah, get the audio book. If you want to try the online course, try the online course. If you go to an event, like I would say, whatever is exciting to you, like follow that. Definitely, definitely, and and the fact that I'm really super excited that, that it's going to be in Spanish, uh, because I, I can guarantee you, a lot of people that feel more comfortable just reading, just getting the content in Spanish, and and uh, the reason why we started with, with your, this new era to have like like the like English uh, podcast, even though still still out of Spanish, target to a Spanish community, is because of the kind of value of the information and the transformational like. Once I ha- and I'll have Mario back because he was part of my podcast in Spanish, and I'm gonna bring him back when whatever the whenever the book is in Spanish because he's I mean he's the proven uh, he's the the proven con- concept of the how can you change life even though you're successful, yeah. So that 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 would be great. And if you're doing an audible, it would be even better because I mean people like me I, I, at least I like to listen in, in the gym or driving, and it's so convenient. And um, if you need someone to record it in Spanish, I'll be more than happy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Noted. Okay, uh, so we talk about about different stuff, and uh, and you've been growing for I mean, from 2019 to 2020. Uh, let's talk about your team. How big is your team right now? Uh, because uh, when you start doing everything yourself, and as an entrepreneur, you want to do everything on your own. And there's a great book that I always recommend, which is Who Know How. So then, so then you have to figure out. You have to get the right who's in order to do the how, because otherwise you were gonna drive yourself crazy. So, how big is your team? Uh, how do you structure? I mean, they're, they're all local here. They have you have a lot of VAs mm-hmm. uh, because I'm sure uh, in, in your in your space, uh, like almost like in real estate, everyone wants wants to become like real estate investor. Everyone wants to be one, and everybody know a lot of people want to become like 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 a performer coach. And then they realize it's really it's really hard. It's hard to get clients. You mentioned that you need to have like an, an amount of hours. You have credibility. So how big is your team right now? And, and are they all local? Do you have VAs? How, how, how do you handle it? Uh, my team is not local. They're they're all over the place. Nice. Um, the total bodies working at JDC is around 25, 25 to 30 based on resources. Now, I do use a couple partners for start. Part, part of my... Like we grew so fast, we basically grew from me to 25 employees in 18 months. And so I've got about, I think currently on the team, we've got 12 coaches on my team. 
So I coach and I have, I have JDC team coaches. I've got operations people. And then part of my operations team is kind of outsourced by one of my clients, their company called Nourish. And so he's, ama he's an amazing integrator. So he kind of handles that. Um, we're at the point right now, we're started, we kind of grew with, 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 with contractors, right? And we're at the phase right now where we're starting to pull them back in because we need those resources in-house. Um, but we're, but we're, but I'm kind of lucky because, um, <laughs> kind well, of. it's, well, it's because it's personal growth. People love per people that like personal growth really love personal growth and getting a job that pays well and personal growth is not easy to do. It's really hard. Um, and I try to pay people well because it makes me, I'd probably have more money if I didn't pay my team so well, but I, I like to create, um, a positive environment with people who want to work here and reward them. So I, I'm kind of lucky. It's easy to attract talent. I remember we, we talked about that last time we, we, we met in terms of the culture that, that you want you want your coaches to, to be I mean pay well so they feel comfortable and, and they really uh, provide the most the best value to the clients and then it, like like you say so, um, just pay it forward so so that that's an amazing concept yeah yeah I, I as far as I can tell I've got the highest paid coaches in the industry because I don't want coach, I don't want my coaches to evolve. I want them to commit to being here and evolve and expand. And they're amazing people. Like some of the coaches on my team have more coaching experience than I do. Um, but what's really the really most amazing part of this culture is that everybody here is like into the content. They, they, everybody here wants to do impossible things. Everybody here wants to do that. So when, if you come to my live event and in, and someone raises their hand to be coached during the event, in front of the entire room, you won't be surprised to see my staff members raising their hand because they're all in. So it's, it's, it's really exciting and it's a privilege and I'm grateful for these amazing people around me that I get to share my gifts with them and have it spread through their lives as well. That is amazing because then like, this is team sport, you know? So then be part of the, the great, great team and be a leader. So that make it more, more like a, um, fulfill to, to, to do what you do right now. And, and I mean, that's, that's a blessing that that's an amazing accomplishment. Um, and I have a couple of questions then I know we're not we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. So just to get to know you a little bit more as a person. So what are your hobbies? Uh, yeah. when you're not doing the coaching calls or, or the, you're not, you're not doing the events, so you're not just thinking about just the next book and then you're not preparing your podcast, which is <laughs> seems like how you play full so, <laughs> and then, when you're not in part of the governance. <laughs> and then they actually call, they call you to, to do that because you were, you were in Miami and, and I mean, they, they want to have you. I mean, all of us want to have you. So they want to have you everywhere. So yeah, what do you do for your habits when you are not immersed? When I'm not in, doing this, when I'm not living this stuff? Yeah, it's, it's hard. Five, I live this five, stuff. The five minutes of the, 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 the week that left. Five minutes a week. Like I love, uh, I love wake surfing. You know, we've got a boat on Lake Travis. That's a lot of fun. Um, one, I grew up in California and we used to go to the desert and ride dirt bikes and stuff like that. And, um, and now that I've created success, I've been able to buy dirt bikes for my boys. So although there's no place to ride in Texas, it's, that's really strange. So, um, <laughs> we're planning on doing more off-road trips back to California to going out there, but you know, we, we love traveling a lot. So travel, off-road, boating, stuff like that. Nice. Do you have like, like a physical office or do you have like a home office? Right now it's a home office. Um, because everybody's virtual. Yeah, I know. I know that makes a lot makes more sense. And uh, so, how do you deal with your family, your kids, and everything? I mean, because <laughs> I, I, I'm asking you that question because I have a mom yeah. office too. So I left my W2 like three years ago, and uh, and it's an amazing. Before I used to have an, an hour commute, so now it's 20 seconds. So when the day goes well, it's an amazing. When the day's not that, <laughs> that is not going well, sometimes the uh, I miss the, the an hour commute to decompress. Yes, that's a challenge. And I've, you know, I've had four boys that are under age 11. So they're, they're young and that I've been working home from home for, you know, for almost 10 years now. So it's, um, balancing that is hard. It's it, unfortunately, sometimes the, if, if I'm stressed, it creeps out of the office. Um, we're kind of in the process right now of finding an external space to go to as well, but it's the family, the boys know I work from home, but COVID has made it easier to people, kids walking in on Zoom calls, right? So, <laughs> so the world is a little bit different than it was before. But I love totally. working from home. I love being here. Totally. When I started this podcast, uh, I used to bring the guests here. So they used to come here and I, because 
people didn't feel as comfortable than doing like Zoom. This platform wasn't available at that time. So it, it, it evolved, the, the, the life evolved for all of us and it makes it a lot easier for, for like just to create what we do right now and be able to provide uh, like valuable information to our community. Um, I usually ask people to, to recommend me a book and, 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 and a movie. So I'm sure besides your book, because I know that's the book you're going to recommend. <laughs> Which other book would you recommend in, in, in a movie? You should that you said, you know what? You have some time available. Yeah. I mean, you, you have fun and you learn something. You don't have to yeah. learn something. So people recommend yeah. like the Titanic. So whatever, just a book and a movie. I haven't actually read many um, books. Like I hardly read any books. I got to look at my bookshelf here. Um, yeah. and I, especially biz business books and personal growth books. I, I, I haven't... I don't read them. Um, the last book I read that was a fiction book, which is really good. Um, it was by a guy named Andy Weir, W E I R. And it's called project hail Mary. Um, and it's the science fiction book about like saving the earth. It's by the guy who wrote the book, um, the movie, the Martian. So it's okay. a really, and it was like 600 pages and I couldn't put it down. And I, it was an awesome book. It was this fun adventure book. Um, and as far as a movie, um, movies these days are not what they used to be. Uh, <laughs> But I will say a TV show, the Better Call Saul TV show just ended, and I love that show. Oh my god, it's so good, so good. What was the name again? Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. Okay. Better Call Saul. Yeah, it was a spinoff of Breaking Bad, but it's like the best TV show. And the season just ended recently, so it's an amazing TV show. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, what are your what what is what is your differentiator? How can Jason Drew be able to accomplish whatever you're accomplishing right now? Have a beautiful family, working from home. And and be able to to evolve and 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 affect people's life, including mine, in a positive way. And why other people, like a lot of other people that might want to have the same goal, is not able to do it. Well, I'm you know just like everybody else. I'm a guy working hard to support his family. Um, and and what I've done, and I think the thing that really separates me, um from from those that are not at this point of success yes is that i don't back down from the growth that life is giving me um so when life gives me a challenge i say yes so most of my success i would say is is i can i can map it back to me saying yes more than i say no i, I love that uh, we were uh, at the miami event and uh, uh ran serhan uh, one of the one, that, that's one of his advice. Just say yes. Just say yes. They will figure it out. Just say yes and just figure it out. So yeah. that that's an amazing thing. So Jason, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's the first time. I'm sure you're, we're gonna do it again. Hopefully, we get the the the, 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 the book in Spanish and the audio. That's something that we already see some some comments in, uh, the the people love it because like we have a different generation. You know, people that, that maybe were the immigrants, the 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 were born here, the first generation, second generation. The, they feel more comfortable and, and they're already your clients. But they always they always like have a grandma or even mom, uncles that, that they don't feel as comfortable at the consuming the content in in, in English. So that's why uh, learning Spanish is going to be an amazing. So Jason, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure. We're going to put all the links and everything so people can reach out to you. Uh, and it was a pleasure as always. I mean, you are so much information, so much value. And then you are a good person overall. I mean, like sometimes people that have a lot of information, they're not a good, good person, but you have a good heart and a good soul. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for being uh, the invitation. It was a great opportunity. I appreciate it. Okay. So just wait for me. Uh, we, 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 can, we can just... Uh, uh, say, say bye in, in a few seconds. Ok, eh, a todos ustedes una vez más, gracias por acompañarnos, invitarlos a que nos acompañen esta noche, vamos a estar de vuelta a las 8 de la noche, tenemos invitado muy especial, vamos a estar hablando con Mario Echeverre, todo lo que tiene que ver acerca de cómo calcular los números en, to en toda la, la parte de inver inversiones en propiedades multifamiliares en apartamentos, si les gustó el libro o si quieren más información, vamos a colocar todos los enlaces en la parte de abajo para que se puedan conectar con Jason Gris. Para nosotros fue un placer, que los bendiga a todos y nos encontramos más tarde a las 8 de la noche, hora del este.